All right, in this video, I'm just going to show you how to quickly add REST consume capabilities to your application. I'm going to use the Open Movie Database in order to show you that. It's a free database for connecting to movie information using a REST API. Uh, you do have to go out and get a REST API key from them first. Uh, you can do that for free, and it just gives you a limited amount of uh, daily uh, calls that you can make. But then once you have that, you can add that to your path for connecting to the API and you'll be able to get what you need. And then there's a bunch of parameters that you can use to do searches on material. All right, let's get started. So I'm in my app and I want to go ahead and add some uh, REST capabilities. Now I've already gone out and tested my API using a browser. So I'm gonna create some JSON structures. JSON structures give you the ability to add JSON to your application in the form of a, well, as a form of a structure that you can use in what we call import mappings in Mendix. And I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. So we're gonna add a movie search results JSON structure, and I'm just gonna change some of the, some of the names of some of the uh, fields that I'm bringing in or some of the properties from that uh, JSON. And once I do that, that gives me the ability to use that JSON structure, so not the data that I've put into it, but the structure of that JSON to call out to that REST API and actually get uh, JSON information in an object format and use it. I have one more JSON structure that I need to create, and that's for actual movie details. So I'll just get through that really quickly. And now I'm ready to go ahead and create a, a microflow that will consume the REST information. Now a microflow is essentially a function in Mendix. So if you think about how you would write a function in JavaScript or Java or C Sharp, a microflow is basically the same thing. So in this microflow, I'm just going to go ahead and pull the search results. And over on the right-hand side in the toolbox, there are a number of different activities that I can actually uh, use. And the first one I'll use, of course, is this call rest. And inside of here, I put in the location for where I wanna go and get this information. And that's going to be the URL for the search that I did. And I'll grab that. And right now it's just hard coded for the purposes of the exercise, but I'll paste that in. And then I want to take a look at the response that I will get from here. So I'm going to get JSON back, but Mendix out of the box doesn't really know what to do with that. And that's where import mappings come in. So I'm gonna create an import mapping and that import mapping is going to use that JSON structure that I created a, a moment ago. So if I look at that import mapping, right now it's pretty blank, but I can go ahead and select elements and choose the JSON. And what this is, what's nice about this is I can use that JSON structure over and over again on a number of different import mappings. And then once I create this import mapping, I can actually use it uh, throughout my application. I'm gonna deselect a couple of things because I just want the objects that are coming through so that I can get a list of objects because we wanna show that on our page. So I'll create that and then I'll map automatically and by mapping automatically, I basically am creating a non-persistent entity or a database table that's only going to persist in memory. So it doesn't get written anywhere and that's why it's yellow. And now I'll go back to my microflow and in my response, you'll see that I've got that mapping. I'm gonna bring back all the values and you can see that the output is going to be a list of those search results. I'll just rename the variable here. And then what I'll do is I'll go over and on the endpoint at the end of this microflow, I'll make sure that I actually return a type of search result and that's going to be that list of search results that I created. So now what I can do is I can actually use this microflow in multiple different ways. But in this case, I'm gonna actually use it to uh, for a page to show data on a page. So I'm gonna choose a list and I'm going to call it uh, the movie list. And I'll go to the list default template. 
for the page that I want to create. And I'll pop up this page template, and I'm just going to do some quick manipulation of it. Delete the top. And then I'm going to go into this list view. And where it says data source, I have a number of different choices. I'm going to choose microflow. And I'm going to pick that microflow that I created, because we know that it's actually going to return that list. And then what Mendix allows me to do is basically uh, accept the values that are going to come back in that list because we know what the structure is from the entity that we created. And I'll just create, uh, change these to text boxes as opposed to text fields because I don't need the five lines each. But I do want to keep it uh, for the poster because the poster URL can be pretty long. So now that I have that and I have that list box, I can actually, and I have this page, I can add it to my navigation. So I'll add this page to my navigation so that when I go ahead and test this application, I can just go ahead and run it, click on the page that I want to look at, and get the results. So here I have the film as an icon. I can show a page as the action that I want to use on click. I'll pick that page that I created. I'll click OK. And now if I go ahead and run this locally, I'll save it. It'll build. I don't have a database yet, so I'll create the database. And now I can go ahead and view, and I'll pull up my home page first. And then if I click on that film icon, you'll see there are my results from the Open Movie Database. So that's a quick and dirty way for you to add a REST consume to your application.